Hello everyone, and welcome back to the reading, Mass Effect Revelation. Today we will be diving into chapter 4, so let's get into it. <clears throat> First Lieutenant Kaylee Sanders was smart. She was one of the Alliance's top computer and systems technicians. She was attractive. Other soldiers at the base were always trying to pick her up when she wasn't on duty. She was young. At 26, she could expect at least half, another half century of healthy, productive years ahead of her. And she knew she was on the verge of making the biggest mistake of her life. She glanced warily around the bar, sipping nervously at her drink as she pressed her, herself deeper into her small corner, trying not to draw attention. Average in both height and build, Kaylee only really distinguishing feature was her shoulder length blonde hair, a genetically recessive trait. Natural blondes were nearly extinct, for her, her hair was a dirty blonde with streaks edging towards shades of brown. And there were still plenty of humans who dyed their hair blonde anyway. She didn't normally stand out in a crowd. That made it easy for her to escape notice here. The black hole was packed. Most of the crowd was human, not surprising. Considering the bar was an upscale establishment within walking distance, of the spaceports on Elysium, the Alliance's oldest and largest colony in the Skillian Bridge. But at least a third of patrons were made up of other species. Batarians were the most pro predominant. <clears throat> she could see their narrow eyes bobbing on their sinewy necks among the crowd. They had oversized nostrils and a large triangular nose that were almost flat against the face. The tip pointing straight down to their thin lips and pointed chin. Their faces were covered with hair so short and fine it looked like the soft velvet of a horse's nose. Though the hair grew longer and thicker around the mouth, a flat stripe of ridged cartilage ran along the tops of the skulls down the backs of their necks. But the most unique characteristic of the species was undoubtedly the fact that they possessed two distinct sets of eyes. One pair was set wide in predominant, uh, prominent bony sockets protruding from the corners of their face, giving their skull a noticeable diamond shape. The second set of eyes was smaller and closer together, set higher in the face, just underneath the middle of the forehead. Batarians had a habit of looking at you with all four orbs simultaneously, making it difficult for binocular species to know which pair to focus on during conversations. The inability to maintain eye contact was disconcerting for most other species, and the Batarians always tried to exploit this advantage in situations involving bargaining and negotiations. Like the Alliance, the Batarian government was actively settling the verge, trying to establish a foothold in a region ripe for expansion. But the Black Hole currently played host to a number of other aliens as well. She saw several Turians among the crowd their features largely obscured by the hard, tattooed carapaces of flesh and bone that covered their heads and faces like fierce, pagan masks. She noticed the quick, darting eyes of a small cluster of Solarians across the room. A pair of massive Krogan loomed in the shadows near the door, like prehistoric dinosaurs standing on their hind legs, guarding the entrance. A few rotund bullets waddled about the room, and a single Asari server, ethereal and beautiful, glided effortlessly through the crowd, moving from table to table 
while balancing a full tray of drinks. Kaylee had come here alone, but it seemed as if everyone else in the bar had arrived in a group. They were leaning on the bar or huddled around a, the high tables or milling about on the dance floor or pressed up against the walls. Everyone seemed to be having a good time, laughing and chatting with friends, co-workers, or business associates. Kaylee was amazed they could even hear one another. The constant din from 50 simul simultaneous conversations rose up to the ceiling and crashed down over her like a wave. <clears throat> she tried to escape it by squeezing herself even farther back into her own little corner. When she first arrived, she had thought the presence of the crowd would be comforting. Maybe she could lose herself in the faceless ma mass of people, but the drinks at the black hole were as potent as their reputation. And even though she was only halfway through her second glass, her senses were already slightly dulled. Now there was too much noise, too much motion. She couldn't keep a fix on what was happening around her. Nobody here had any reason to be suspicious of the young woman standing alone in the corner. She found herself constantly scanning the room to see if anyone was watching her. At the moment, nobody was even glancing in her direction. Not that this observation brought any comfort. She was in a tough spot, and a case of alcohol-fueled paranoia wasn't going to make things any easier. Kaylee set her drink down on a small counter built into the bar's wall and tried to collect her thoughts, taking stock of her situation. Sixteen hours ago, she had walked off the premise of the Sedan Research Facility without permission. Leaving the base was a minor infraction. Things escalated when she didn't show up for her assigned shift eight hours later. Dereliction of duty was serious enough to go on her permanent record, and in another four hours her status would officially become UA, unauthorized absence, a crime punishable by court-martial, dishonorable discharge, and even imprisonment. She picked up her half-finished drink and took another long sip, hoping the alcohol might help slow her racing thoughts. Everything had seemed so simple yesterday when she'd left. Kaylee had proof that her su superiors at Sedona were conducting illegal research, and she was determined to report them. She caught a shuttle leaving the base, flashing a pass she'd forged by hacking into the restricted security files, and arrived here on Elysium a few hours later. It was somewhere on that trip that she'd started having second thoughts. With plenty of time to consider the full consequences of her actions, she began to see that things weren't as black and white as she first assumed. She had no idea how many people at the base might be implicated in a formal inquiry. What if people she worked with, people she considered her friends, were somehow involved? Did she really want to bring them down? Part of her felt like this was an act of betrayal. But her hesitations went beyond loyalty to her fellow soldiers. She was taking a huge risk with her own career. She had evidence Sedon was conducting research way outside the scope of its official parameters. Evidence obtained by illegally compromising top security clearance files, acting on nothing more than her initial suspicions and a wild hunch. Her hunch had turned out to be true. But technically, her entire investigation had been an act of treason against the Alliance. The more she thought about it, the more Kaylee realized she had no idea what she'd gotten herself into. She couldn't say if her superiors were acting alone, or if they were just following orders from someone higher up the chain of command. What if she reported them to the very person who'd ordered the illegal research conducted in the first place. Would anything change, or would it just be covered up? Was she possibly throwing away her career and risking some serious jail time for nothing? In truth, if they really wanted to 
find her. It wouldn't have been that hard. She was on record boarding a shuttle heading to the Elysium with her fake pass, while she doubted the Alliance would send anyone after her. Not until she was missing for more than 24 hours, and it became a criminal offense. So she still had a little time to decide what to do. Not that a few more hours would make such a difference. She had been struggling with, with this problem ever since she touched down. Kaylee was too wired to sleep, too afraid to go back to Sedona, and face charges, too scared to press on. She kept moving from bar to bar, having a few drinks when walking it, then walking it off to sober up. She never stayed in one place for, for long, fearful of drawing unwanted attention. Her past took her from bar to lounge to club as she hopped, but hoped to find some sudden inspiration that would miraculously solve her problem. <clears throat> she glanced up at the news vid showing on the screen set in, into the wall by the far side of the bar, her eye drawn by a familiar image. Although she couldn't hear what the broadcast was saying, she recognized a file photo of the file photo of the Sedona Research Facility. Puzzled, Kaylee furrowed her brow and squinted, trying to read the rapidly moving type skimming across the bottom of the screen. Alliance Research Base Attacked. Her eyes snapped wide in alarm as she slammed her glass down on the counter, spilling what remained of her drink. Ignoring it, she stepped out from her little corner and sh shoved her way through the crowd heedlessly pushing and elbowing the other patrons out of her way until she was close enough to hear the newscaster's words. Details are still sketchy, but we have received official confirmation from Alliance sources that the Sedona Research Facility appears to have been the victim of a terrorist attack. Anxious to hear more, Kaylee pressed forward, jostling one of the other human patrons and causing him to spill his drink. A man turned toward her angrily exclaiming, Hey, watch where you're... He trailed off when he realized the bump had been delivered by calm, calmly a young lady. <clears throat> Kaylee didn't even acknowledge him with a glance, keeping her riveted on the... her eyes riveted on the screen overhead. The scene is still restricted pending the Alliance investigation, so we aren't able to bring you any live images. The man looked up at the screen, feigning interest in the hopes of forming a connection with her. Gotta be the Batarians, he said. Matter of factly, the, the friend he'd been talking with chimed in as well, eager to impress the attractive newcomer to their conversation. New Alliance has been projecting something like this for months, he said, assuming the tone of an unquestioned authority on the matter. My cousin's in the military, and he told me... A withering gaze from Kaylee shut him up. His silence secured, she turned back to the vid just in time to catch the tail end of the report. There are no report, reported survivors in other news. The human ambassador to, to Kamala recently held a press conference to announce the signing of a new trade, trade accord. No survivors. The words left Kaylee numb, stunning her like a heavy blow to the back of the head. She had been at the base yesterday. Yesterday! If she hadn't run off on this foolish mission, she'd be dead right now. The room began to list to one side. Kaylee realized she was about to faint. Hold on. The man she had bumped into caught her as she teetered, holding her up while she struggled against the vertigo. Hey, what's the matter? His voice showed a real concern. You, you okay? Huh? Kaylee muttered, not even aware that most of her weight was being supported by a complete stranger. The man helped her stand straight, then let go, though he was poised to leap in again if she fell. He placed a hand on her arm to comfort her, or maybe to help her keep her balance. Did you know someone at the base? Did you have friends there? 
Yes. I mean, no. Too much booze, too little sleep, and the shock of what happened to Sedone had momentarily disabled her, but she was beginning to feel secure on her feet again. Her agile mind was clicking. The full implications of what had just happened were finally registering. She had fled a top-secret research facility mere hours before it was attacked. She wasn't just a survivor. She was now a suspect. The two men were looking at her with a mixture of puzzle, puzzlement and concern. She smoothly disengaged herself from the hand on her arm and gave them an apologetic smile. I'm sorry, that story caught me off guard. I, I know people in the Alliance. Anything we can do? The second man asked. He got the sense his offer was secure, uh, sincere. Just a nice guy looking at, out for a fellow human. But right now all she wanted was to get away without doing anything else that could make anyone remember her. No, no, I'm all right. Thank you, though. She took a step back as she spoke. I have to go. I'll be late for work. Sorry about your drink. She turned and disappeared back into the crowd, heading for the door. Glancing back over her shoulder, she was relieved to see neither of the men made any attempt to follow her. They simply shrugged, dismissing the bizarre encounter, then resumed their previous conversation. It was dark and chilly outside as she stepped out from the bar. The news of Sedone's destruction had sobered her up, but she could still use a walk in the crisp night air to really clear her head. The black hole was located on one of Elysium's main thoroughfares. It was still early in the evening, and the sidewalks were full of people. She moved quickly down the busy street, not heading in any particular direction, just feeling the need to be on the move. Her head was still spinning as she fought her way through the heavy pedestrian traffic. Slowly, the paranoia began to creep back into her thoughts until she shied, yeah, until she shied away from every passerby and jumped at every unexpected sound. <clears throat> she felt vulnerable out here with all these strangers needlessly exposed. A deserted side street offered temporary refuge. She darted down the narrow alley, stopping only when she had gone to the end of the block. The noise of people and monorails coming from the main drag was now only a faint murmur. The news about Sedone changed everything. She had to reevaluate her situation. Had her disappearance somehow triggered the attack? It was hard to imagine it was mere coincidence, but she didn't see how the two events could be related. One thing was certain, they'd be looking for her now. She had to cover her tracks, find some way to book a flight off Elysium that couldn't be traced back to her. She'd need to find a fake ID or bribe someone to let her board a ship illegally. If she stayed here much longer, someone was bound to. Kaylee screamed at the, as she felt a heavy hand slam down on her shoulder. She was spun around and found herself staring into the chest of a terrifyingly large man with a vice-like vice grip. Looking up, she met his eyes, cold and hard. Kaylee Sanders? It was more an accusation than a, than a question. Alarmed, she tried to take a step back, squirming and twisting away in an effort to break free. Her captor shook her once roughly, and she winced in pain as his nails dug into the flesh of her collarbone. Lieutenant Kaylee Sanders, you're under arrest on suspicion of conspiring to commit treason against the Alliance. In her surprise, it had taken Kaylee a second to realize what the man was wearing. Now she clearly recognized his uniform. Alliance MP. They'd found her already. He must have spotted her on the main road and followed her into the deserted alley. All the fight went out of her. Her head slumped forward as she surrendered to her fate. I didn't do it, she whispered. It's not what you think. He grunted it as if he didn't believe her, but he did drop his hand from her shoulder. 
so you could feel the skin beneath your sh shirt bruising already. Pulling out a pair of cuffs from his belt, he held them up for her to see. In a curt voice, he ordered, Turn around, Lieutenant. Hands behind your back. She hesitated, then nodded. Resisting would only make things worse. She was innocent. Now she'd have to prove it in front of a military tribunal. Don't try to run. I'm authorized to use lethal force if necessary. His words drew her attention down to the weapon on his hip, even as she slowly turned her back to him, complying with his commands from the corner of her eye. She was just able to make out the a heel syndicate manufactured striker pistol holstered on his hip. Her mind screamed out a warning even as she felt the cuff slap onto her right wrist. The Hene Hanna Kedar P7 was the standard issue pistol for the Alliance personnel, not the striker. The realization came a millisecond after she felt the second cuff slap around her left wrist. Acting on instinct and adrenaline, Kaylee threw her head back violently. She was rewarded with a wet crunch as it smashed into the face of the fake Alliance MP. She spun around as the man dropped to his knees, momentarily stunned by her unexpected attack. His arms dangled limply at his sides, and a river of blood was pouring from his mouth and nose, creating a moist, dark stain on his face. The perfect target as she brought her knee up, inflicting even more damage to the injured area. The blow knocked him backwards, and he slumped down onto his side, gurgling and choking as the blood clogged his throat. His body twitched and he flailed, his legs trying to ward off his attacker. Akalia was remorseless. She didn't know who this imposter was, mercenary or assassin, but she knew if she didn't get away from him, she was dead. Calling on memories of the hand-to-hand -hand combat classes all Alliance personnel received during basic training, she easily avoided his feeble kicks. With her hands still cuffed behind her back, her feet were her only weapon. She danced around the prone figure, moving in so she could deliver the steel toes and heavy heels of her combat boots to the vulnerable areas of his head and chest. Her opponent rolled onto his stomach, trying to protect himself. Kaylee hesitated for a second and spotted his hand fumbling at the holster of his gun. She leaped forward and stomped on his fingers again and again, turning the digits into a mess of broken bones and mangled flesh. She ignored the whimpers and burbling cries as the man tried to beg for mercy. Through blood and shattered teeth, he was still unconscious, so he was still a threat. She kicked him hard in the temple, possibly fracturing his skull. His body spasmed once, then went limp. Another hard kick to the ribs evoked no reaction, assuring her he was really out. She dropped down onto the ground beside the body, moving quickly in case somebody came into the alley to investigate the commotion. The fake MP had cuffed her hands behind her back, but he hadn't done a very good job of it. The metal rings were loose enough on her wrist to allow Kaylee to slide them several inches up and down her forearms. There was just enough play that she might be able to get free. Squirming and struggling, she managed to contort her body just enough to slide her chained wrists down past her hip bones and along the backs of her thighs to, to her knees. She rolled onto her back and sighed, twisting so she could pull her feet through. Her wrists were still cuffed, but at least they were now in front of her. Suppressing a gag reflex, she crawled on her, on her hands and knees through the blood of her assailant until she was directly over his motionless body. He was still breathing in shallow, half-choking gasps. Kelly let loose the breath she didn't even know she had been holding. She felt no remorse over the savage beating she'd inflicted while fighting to save her own life. 
but she was glad she wouldn't have this man's death on her conscience. Training and adrenaline had saved her, that and the carelessness of her opponent. But as her adrenaline wound down and she took in the gruesome scene, she felt the first hints of panic. She was a soldier, but she'd never seen combat duty. She'd never encountered anything like this. Come on, Sanders. The voice inside her head was that of her former drill instructor, though the words were her own. You're not out of this mess yet. She gritted her teeth, determined to finish the job. Even so, Kaylee shuddered as she fumbled around the man's blood-soaked belt until she found the key to unlock her shackles. Releasing the cuffs proved even more difficult than sliding them around to her front, as she had to clasp the key in her teeth to try to fit it into the lock. But after several frustrating minutes, she heard the click and the bonds fell away from her left wrist. With one hand free, it only took another second to unlock the other cuff, and Kaylee was free. Kaylee took a quick look around, relieved to see nobody had stumbled into the alley yet. She grabbed the gun from the man's holster, checked that the safety was on, and stuffed it beneath her jacket and into her belt. She stood up, then froze. She didn't know who the unconscious man at her feet was working for, but it was obvious he had been specifically looking for her. That meant others probably too. They'd have the ports staked out, just waiting for her to try and get off world. She was trapped. She couldn't even go back to the main street, not with her clothes covered in blood. There was only one option left, taking another beating to calm her jangling nerves. Kaylee left her assailant's body where it lay, moving quickly in the direction away from the busy thoroughfare. She spent the rest of the night skulking through the back alleys of Elysium, careful to avoid detection, slowly making her way toward the house of the only person she could turn to for help. A man she promised her mother she'd never speak to again. Awesome. Thank you guys for enjoying this. If you did, enjoy it anyway. Otherwise, that was chapter four of Mass Effect Revelation. So, now, I can't believe we did that in one take. But, yeah, so next time we're going to do chapter five. But, uh, let's think about throwing this episode up right now and then, uh, stay tuned for Monday where we'll have the next episode of Mass Effect drop. And that's Mass Effect 1. But the, yeah, I got other stuff here on the channel too. We got, uh, I think I'm going to do some some Lego Star Wars. And uh, I got to get back on Jade Empire again too. And then uh, some Pokemon Brilliant, oh no, uh, Shining Pearl. Brill brilliantly Shining Pearl. But anyway guys, thank you guys so much for watching. And we'll catch you next time for Chapter 5. Peace.